Hi, how you doing today? My name's Randy. I just want to talk to you a little bit about the world we live in today. It's crazy. The world has gone crazy. And, and you know what? I just want to encourage you to stay out of fear and be careful of all the voices that you hear. Right now, I noticed that everybody is a doctor expert. You know, when a plane crashes, they always have experts on. And all these guys tell you all different kind of stories. And you know what? We have to be careful what we hear. Listen to the news, but you need to turn it off. You, need, you don't want to just fill your brain with all sorts of fear. Because fear keeps you from believing that you're going to make it. And you know what? We're going to make it. America will get through this trying time. We're going to be fine. It's tough. And I want to encourage you to just keep doing what you're doing. Go to work if you can. Do what you can. There's a lot of things out there to help small businesses right now. Our government has all sorts of loan programs and, and ways that you can get your payroll paid for. Well, look into that. Don't be discouraged by the paperwork. Don't be discouraged by the banks. Just stay focused on what you're doing. My dad told me, he says, you know, you throw enough stuff against the wall, something's going to stick. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep throwing stuff against the wall. Things are going to stick. We're going to get through this, and we're going to be fine. And I just want to encourage you businesses today to do what you got to do to make it happen. Keep your employees. Don't do your best to keep people on. Because your number one asset is your employees and your customers. And we thank you. I raise this, thanks you. We care about you. We're doing everything we can to provide you more information and literature. But just keep doing what you're doing. And I just want to invite Liz Haas to come, our rock star. She's going to come and teach you today on some different things to try to find ways to help you. And here's Liz now. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Well, welcome to session three. Doing our virtual trade shows, and I'm excited that you're with us today. I've heard a lot of great comments and um, questions coming in, and just keep them coming. It helps us to kind of gear up to what uh, what we need to present to you, what we can help you with to in your business. So today we have um, session three. If you missed session two, it's available on our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash sand carving. So you can um, actually subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, and so you can have access to all of our videos when they're available. But today, what do we have? We have artwork. So we are presenting an artwork segment. Um, we have our graphic artist from Raisist. Her name is April Willis. And she's been with the company for several years. She, she actually started part-time while she was um, in school. So we're very fortunate that she was able to spend a little bit of time with us today. Um, what she actually does in our art department is she receives artwork from our customers, from you. And she will set it up and, in a layout form. She'll send it to print, and it goes down to our production facility where they make and produce the stencils for you. So the stencils are shipped to you and they're ready to use, peel and stick. Now what you don't understand is sometimes there's adjustments that have to happen to that artwork that you might not know or, or you may know, but, but we have to fine tune that so that you have the best quality artwork available for your clients. So your artwork and the etched piece looks perfect. It looks the best that it can look. And so with that, our graphic artist, April, is going to give us a few tips that she does to some of the fonts, um, kind of strengthening those centers of the letters. So you think of the, like, a, like an A or the E's, the centers of those letters, strengthening them so that it looks great sandblasted. Um, sometimes clients say, hey, we need this artwork. It's really delicate, but I need to put it on a six mil. We're gonna engrave this into stone. What are the steps that we need to do to fix that? So um, that's what we're going to be targeting today is with artwork. Um, she is using Illustrator, but you can use Corel Draw or any graphic program. Um, and then we are printing on an inkjet printer today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to introduce you to April Willis. Hi, April. Thank you for joining us today. 
And today we have an, a graphic image here, and you will be able to see it on her screen. She has a border. And tell us about this border that you've, because that you, sometimes you get images from people that they're like low res images, right? Okay. Right. So tell us about this particular image so here. When we get an image, um, usually Google search is number one people go to. However, when we receive them, they're, they're usually low resolution images. And Google doesn't really have any high resolution images you can go to online. So if you're going to send a Go or Google search something, number one is you're going to have to take it into some form of graphics program. Mm -hmm. I use Illustrator. Okay. So right here, you can s if you can see my image, um, you can see that it's very grainy, very low pixelated. resolution, pixelated. Yes. There's areas here that are shaded gray. Gray sh shaded areas don't work well on the masking making or a stencil. making yes. a stencil at all. Right. So to fix that, we take it into Illustrator, in my case, and we have to image trace this. If, so, so you're going to take it from a JPEG and you're going to vectorize it. In a right. sense. Okay. Right. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to click and shift will drag my image across straight and alt will copy over. Okay. So I'm going to copy it over to my next page. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to keep this here in case I ever have to refer back to it for anything or something didn't look right or work right. Um, centered. Okay, so I'm now going to image trace this. I'm going to, there's a little button up here in my Illustrator um, where I click this and it, you can see that it changed it automatically to a vector image. Okay, so vector you can see that on the screen now is yes. we went from a JPEG to a vector image. Yes. Okay, but yes. it looks a little distorted, it doesn't look exactly like your JPEG. Exactly. It, you know, you lose, you're going to lose some detail when in doing this. Okay. Um, and you're going to see that there's a lot of shaded area, a lot, just a lot of pixelation it, that happened because that's what it's reading here on your screen. So I'm going to adjust things a little bit by clicking the little, there's a panel that ha it's called the image trace panel. So your image trace panel, right. and it'll bring up it'll bring up um, your it'll bring up sliders that you can do to adjust this piece of artwork. So I'm seeing a threshold. Yes. Um, paths. See noise corners um, paths threshold. Threshold is feel free to play with this because every every image is different. Um, so there's no one set settings. No. You do, you have to kind of you do have move, to move, adjust, and see how according it works. to according to what okay artwork piece you're working on. So if I was to go up on this, you'll see it gets bolder. And that's your going, threshold. Exactly. Okay. So if I'm going down, I'm losing detail. So I kind of want to keep it right in the center because that's where it looked the best to and me, in my opinion. Threshold. It looks like it's thickening the lines and thinning the lines. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So. Um, now I'm going to, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to take the noise out. Noise is just um, whatever it sees. Basically, these are whatever it sees and whatever it, it's going to adjust it to what it sees and to what it, what it looks like. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take the corners down. The corners are going to either round out or make it square. We don't want it to look square, so I'm rounding it out a little more. And then I'm going to slide the paths up and down to see which looks best. Paths, and if you can see, it's really starting to take shape. Now right. it's not going to be exact. So you have your image next to it, right. so where you can kind of try to mimic exactly. So image. I can kind of try and see, like, okay, is that looking correct? So now we have. I, I pretty much have this image where I need it right now. Um, it looks okay. That would look okay on a piece of glass, but remember, you're you're only going to get out of your glass piece what you're putting into it via artwork. Right. So if you, artwork is the most important part. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're going to, so if you're going to use this on your piece of glass, that'll be 
completely fine, but um, it's really up to you. Well, I think that you've seen so many images come through and you know what that potential of that image could be. Exactly. And how you're, I think you're a perfectionist <laughs> where you really want to make that artwork yes. the best yeah. possible image. Okay. So yes. um, I'm going to go ahead and expand this. And that made the artwork from an image to shapes. Okay. And vector programs, you know, vector images are shapes. They're not, they're not pictures, um, which is Photoshop. So once you expand so. it, you no longer have the capability of playing with the image trace panel. No. Okay. You so lose that's that ability. Okay. Yes. So ungroup. I'm going to just take this box off because I, it's gonna be in my way later. Okay. So again, I could just use this. It's it's gonna look okay on the glass. Um, so now, but being the perfectionist that I am, I'm gonna redo this. Okay. Um, I actually took the liberty of redoing it. And a lot of times I will say, taking things off Google is fine, mm -hmm. but you may run into the issue of trademarks, copyrighted, right, that someone else's so, artwork. Exactly. So. What I, what I like to do um, is change the artwork just slightly or a little more to my liking or to my client's liking or whatever. So you're just best. using an image from Google just to kind of get an idea right. of what you're looking for and then right. make your, adjust, your right. own adjustments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So I, if you can tell, I actually changed, changed these, um, these images to hearts because yes. I'm doing this. I'm, in my mind, I'm doing this for a wedding. Okay. Um, I figured hearts would look best, would look good in there. I kind of played with it a little bit and thought that this looked best. So, um, as far as fonts goes, now I'm going to do both of these because we're going to see what it comes out like on the glass. Okay. Correct? Yes. So, um, I'm going to grab a font and up um, just by clicking my text tool, my mm -hmm. type tool. And I'm going to put something in there. Do you ever get people want to do a whole name inside these little tiny borders? Or yeah. These little yes. Um, however, it, it, this may look large to put a whole name in there, but I do, I do advise against that just because this is such a small area that you're not going to get a clean name in there. Right. It's going to be too small, likely. Right. So the initials um, stand out a little bit better. And the initials are going to be a little bit better of a decision to make okay. with this piece because it is a two and a half inch piece. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to make it as large as I want and you can play with fonts. Feel free to play with whatever font you'd like. This is just a very popular one. Um, uh, to, in today's, in today's, um, day, we just like to use these fonts for weddings. Right. So I'm going to use this one. I'm going to shift and copy here. Okay. Cause I want two, I want the first. The, just the initials on this glass piece. And I'm going to choose S. All right. So looking, I think we have a question. So I'm going to kind of, let me step over here and see the screen. I'm telling on myself because I don't have my glasses on from across the room. So um, Stacy, hi, welcome. Um, so the question, I'm new and I missed the beginning. Do I need a special program if I just wanted to do text and fonts? Programs, the graphic programs are always, they're going to give you um, more options for adjusting fonts and sizing fonts. However, you can, there are some free software programs. I believe Inkscape is one of them that you can use. Um, there are several out there. A lot of them are on, a lot of free ones you just want, they give you, they don't give you as much ability to modify the fonts. But I know Inkscape is something that's free. I know people use that, and it works for producing a stencil and for this type of process. So I would go with Inkscape and look up some other free um, software programs. I'll kind of do a little research and, and get back to you on that. Um, so let's see here. We, we have, uh, um, Stuart mentioned, to get a better trace, uh, first make your image a higher resolution. So that is something that, that's a good tip. Um, thank you. I have heard of that before, increasing that resolution and then doing an image trace. So um, we'll come back to some questions in a moment, but let's go ahead and finish with April and her font and kind of making that adjustment. All right. So we have a W and an S. Okay. And again, re remembering that this is would be small, like on a whiskey glass. Mm -hmm. So that's why we want to make sure that the letters look nice and clean. 
So what is an issue with this particular font? Um, this particular font, you have thicker areas and you have thinner areas. So these thinner areas may have a problem. May have a problem in washout. They may have a problem on your glass. It may not. It might not um, cut through all the way, or you know, the, the, there could be just different issues with the thinner. With the, the thicker, thicker thin. areas. Okay. Exactly. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stroke. All right. Just and an ever so slight stroke. Um, right up here is in your column. There's several different ways to do this. There's several okay. different ways to do everything that I'm doing right now. So. Um, this is just the simplest way that I know to use. Okay. So um, 0 0.25, I'm going to just do a 0.25 black stroke. You see it automatically changed it to black. That's just yep. something that Illustrator does. Um, you can change that color to white if you needed to make it thinner, but this is what I'm doing for now. So if you can see, I, it did make it a little thicker. Um, this area in here is also going to close up as you're going to use that, so you kind of want to watch out for that. It's really up to you whether you want to have that in there or not. Um, so the thicker you go, that center of that gonna, between that W starts to get exactly, really small. So up. that ends up being a tiny piece of mask. Yes. If you're doing mass production, that little speck of mask can pr propose a problem right. when you're doing washout or when you're blasting. Some may stay and you may lose some just exactly. because it's just a little speck of mask. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I understand, yes. So um, so this area in here, I could either take it out or leave it in. It's really personal preference. I'm leaving it in because we're going to do this on a thinner mill for okay. today. And I'm going to take this and put this in my next in my next drawing as well. Okay. Now this, I could go a little thicker and take this out, but mm -hmm. there's a little more work involved. Um, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Okay. Now, I know that we talked about one another issue with this particular border mm -hmm. is that there's a point in a certain section, and then another point, you kind of oh, rounded them right. out, and there's a good so, reason for that. So when I redid this, um, when I redid this, I noticed that there was these little points here. And you can see the top one has more of a point it, than the sides. sides. Right. So this one right here, you, if you if you look, you'll notice that there's this point right this this area in here. Well, that area because it's so pointed, it's going to shift and wash out. Um, that's a common that's a common thing I see all the time in artwork being sent to us. Um, so what I usually like to do um, is grab my direct select tool. Okay. And if you see, it opens that that little area up. Mm -hmm. So that I can click on it to to open the dot and then adjust ever so slightly to make it round it out to look similar to my other points and if you notice that makes it that makes it a lot stronger right and that's you see that like on a star like yes. I, I see a lot of times where people will send in like maybe the American flag and they have the little stars and they're really pointy yes pointed and so what you do is you tend to kind of round them out a little bit either round them or square them but usually it just depends on the piece of artwork but generally when you have like a leaf or something like that kind of a design mm -hmm. you want to just kind of round it just a tiny bit now I could have thickened this up with a stroke as well mm -hmm. um, but I didn't want it to be any thicker than it already is so I just decided to do that and since this is a repeating design pattern I'm able to just fix one and then repeat it and all then copy around. it all the way mm -hmm. right right so, great tip. I, I do see that often. Sometimes people are trying to do that. It's so pointed mm -hmm. and um, on certain areas, and then you're blasting like on a granite piece, and you just barely see this little speck of uh, mask. And so now, right. by rounding it or squaring it, that looks like an actual star, or that that right. design is now more pronounced and has a better appearance. Right. It's so a great tip. So, I'm going to. Now this mask is, th this can be ready, ready. to go to okay. production. All right. Um, you know, you just kind of look over your artwork. I usually like to zoom out because once I zoom out, I can see the whole thing and I can see where it, what needs to be adjusted and what doesn't. I could change this font. I can use whatever font I'd like. I just chose this one because it's kind of a popular font. Right. So, now okay. Let's move so on. You we, have a different image Now we here. did, we did do a different image. And I'm using um, I'm using University Roman for this font. Now, 
University Roman is is another font that's got the thin letter, the thin mm -hmm. side and the thick side. Times New Roman has that. Um, Which are, it's a popular font, isn't right. it? Right, these are all popular fonts. Um, now, to use this font, it would, it's okay. Um, I like to, a lot of times fonts, when you're typing them in, they come in very close to each other. So what I like to do is separate them using my, using my character tool. And I, I, I've already separated this. Um, if this was, if this was um, regularly typed, it would come up, come in something, something like this. So basically, when you bring in a font, and if you add a stroke to it, it kind of closes or pushes the letters mm -hmm. together, so they're touching. Mm -hmm. Again, when we're thinking, when we're turning this artwork into a mask, now we have all of the letters touching. Is that what you're looking for? Most of the time, not. You want the individual letters. So if, with you, if you take a look at my screen, you'll see the R and the A are connected. This is going to be a problem that's going to be connected when you engrave. So I'm going to change that by just simply clicking optical. Mm -hmm. That'll make sure every letter is optically spaced apart the okay. way you need it to. And I'm going to go, say, 30. So and not separated them. each letter right. optically. And this is all, we got to think about it, is for recognition. You're putting a name on a glass. You're putting a last name, a monogram. It's for recognizing somebody's receiving right. that. They're purchasing a gift. And so this is where making the letters individual where they're not connected. This is really just a quick step just to kind of fixing exactly. your artwork. Exactly. So where I got this design from, I actually, in Illustrator and in most vector programs, they have brushes and they have tools that you can use. You, I, I like to utilize them when I can. Okay. So basically what I did was I just created a line. I went to my brushes, went to decorative because I know where these things are and feel free to play with them. And um, I clicked direct um, decorative dividers and if you see a menu comes up and they have all these different dividers, I just chose this one just because it appealed to me and it seemed simple enough. So that's where I got my leaf design. Yes, um, that looks that looks like a and that's a brush stroke basically. Yes, it's a brush stroke and it does come in gold. I have okay. to change it to black okay. and white artwork, which is fairly simple. Um, you're just gonna again use your expand tool and change the colors. Okay. So just by selecting them and then mm -hmm. clicking your color palette. Yes. Okay. Yes. So now so let we got we got a real quick question here, I think here or a comment. So for better washout, um, I need to balance the lines in my design. Yes, yeah, so that would be basically kind of strengthening the lines so you have a better washout. In the end, you'll have a better engraving or a, the best engraving possible. Thank you. Um, we're, we are using Illustrator, Illustrator today. So that's what we're using. You can use Corel Draw, Adobe Illustrator. I know some people use like a Photoshop and there are a couple settings in there that you have to have to make it a vector image and to make it 100% black. What's key when coming to artwork is 100% black. Yes. What do you what what do you um, do you CMYK RGB? Um, so in Illustrator, when you're when you're well when you're working in Illustrator, you want to be in CMYK mode. CMYK um, mode. Yeah. CMY yeah. is your colors bringing them down to right. zero, correct? Right. And then your K so, to 100. Basically, this panel right here will show you I'm in CMYK. I'm zero 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 one hundred. Okay, and 100 that is, is the black, and that's accessible as well as in Corel Draw. Yes. So you have a access to modifying oh. from RGB to yes. CMYK. RGB is mainly used for printing, I believe, right? And website. RGB is made for um, usually printing materials and website stuff. And so it's more. Like that, a lot yeah. of times you get artwork that's in RGB mode, correct? Yes, I yes. do get artwork that's in RGB mode, and I do have to change it over for our film to read it as 100%. So again, um, it's real, your artwork is the most important part of making a stencil, and with that, you want to make sure it's set at 100% black. So mm -hmm. by going to CMYK mode and K at 100%, makes it in your program 100% black, and then we go on to printing. Right. Okay. So the, I'm sorry for interrupting, you, but no, let's you're fine. let's move. So you have your brush stroke. Um, yes. So I have my brush stroke. I, I use this, and I could just leave it this way. No problem. I think a three mil might work better for this. 
but if you notice in here I actually went ahead and made a thicker version as well so you can see the, the lines right yes. so you can see the lines and how important it is to keep those lines um, I did thicken it up quite a bit and it does look a lot different this will work on three mil mm -hmm. you know material but um, if I wanted to go thicker and say I wanted to do something different and I wanted to go blast a little deeper you, need, you do need to thicken up these lines now I left this leaf alone so I could show you what I'm gonna do to make that leaf work um, with a thicker material again you have this point up here on this leaf I'm just right clicking and ungrouping it okay to make to select this I could use my direct select but I just decided to do it this way so again I have this little point in here I'm gonna open that up and then I'm going by clicking it on it and then I'm going to pull this down just a little bit to make that to make that leaf stronger Now that's gonna hold up better on your masking right just as we discussed before so now I'm gonna pull this leaf down because I know that this is probably too um, this is probably too thin mm -hmm. and it might not hold up very well and it might shift during washout so what I want to do is pull this down just a little bit make this a little thicker and now I've got a thicker leaf and really it doesn't even look like you've made adjustments so most people probably can't even tell if you make an adjustment to their artwork. Right. It just most, overall it's gonna look better blasted. Again, you're gonna if if we do have to adjust anything, you'll always see a proof from us and we'll always contact them, our customers beforehand. But so this that, is how you that leaf looks look good. If you were doing something on your own. Right. Now I also um, chose this and I'm going to put a stroke on this, which is going to again it's going to make this center close up. So you're going to put a stroke on the text. Yes. Okay. I'm going to put a stroke on the text. Now what I want to do beforehand though is um, because we're going to create this to outlines, which is creating it to shapes. So and that I, has to be done prior. That to, has to be done prior. And I believe in Corel it's create to curves. Um, convert to Convert curves. to curves. Yes, okay. And then that's so. making it into a shape. Right. But once you make it into a shape, you no you longer lose, you no longer have the ability to change any particular letter because okay. now it's a shape and it's not a font. Okay, so you have so, to save it prior. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this off to the side so I have it in case the customer comes back and says something like, "Hey, that's spelled wrong," or you know, I, I forgot an e at the end or sure. whatever, so that you have it here. So I am going to blow this up. And I have my, um, I've selected both of them and I'm going to create to outlines. So I'm gonna right click and you'll see a menu pop up and I'm going to create to outlines. Created it to outlines. Okay. And now I'm going to add a stroke. Probably 0.25 or 0 0.5. 0 0.25 looks pretty good. So that's 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Right. Okay. And I could go thicker if I wanted to. Um, Let's just see, just for the sake of adding a tiny bit more. Now, if you can see, that center of that A is still closed up quite right. a bit, and that's going to create a problem. But you have your wing, your wing tips on your yes, letters. Yes, and my wing tips on my W's are going to have to more, they're a little more fix solid those as well. Mm -hmm. If you don't want a solid line, because I do see the when you go thicker, you have a little bit, just a little white spot right. in between. Right. So that could, in a sense, almost run together while you're blasting. Right. And not only that, but you also have the N that's coming down further than the rest of the lettering. Oh, I see. Okay. So um, I'm going to ungroup, and I'm going to release this A, and you're going to see that I lost that center. Right. I'm just going to shift and click on the outer part of the A, and I'm going to make this white. And I'm going to take the stroke out. So that opens up so that, that A. So that opened up that A a lot more. Black and white artwork, black equals blast. Right. So the white areas, that is your masking material. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to adjust the W. I'm just going to select these points because it's shapes now. So right. I can do however I can do this however I wanted. I could, you know, I'm just going to click on these and pull them in. So you just create a little bit more blue material, blue masking material, more engraving area between those. Yes. And if you notice that, thing, that um, there was an extra point in here, mm -hmm. I'm just going to take that out 
and I'm going to fix this. And I'm hitting shift so that it keeps it, it keeps it um, proportion. Proportion. It keeps it lined. So okay. whatever I do, it's gonna come. It's gonna go across. Nine. It's gonna go across on the line. So. And this is when you're taking like a delicate um, font and then you're making it into. Yes. You have to engrave deeper. Yes. I'm. I'm. All I'm doing right now is just adjusting. Sorry. I clicked on something. <laughs> Now I'm going to get rid of that just like I did the other one. And all I'm doing is just, again, I'm not changing the letter, I'm just widening up these areas so that it doesn't look like one solid line across. Well, what's interesting is, is because it's big on your screen, it almost looks like a big mm -hmm. name, but a, a big font. And but it's when, small. You, when, when you go down, it's small. It's, it's very small. Right. So you can see that I have adjusted I, I've adjusted everything the way I need to now I could go in and fix these ends as well but I don't think it's too bad I don't think it's going to show up too much on the glass so I'm going to leave it alone the less you have to touch the artwork the better right so the most important part is just strengthening the lines in the mm -hmm. brush stroke yes and as well as the wing tips and then yes. opening up the centers of your exactly. of your letters yes okay and so that's um that's how we would do that's how we would fix this artwork so let's talk about fonts. Um, I know oh. that you, I've asked you many times, what are your favorite fonts? And it's like mostly uh, there are fonts that you, yeah. you can name more fonts that you don't like versus what are versus your favorite fonts. Yes, exactly. Um, I, I know there's a lot of popular fonts out there, Helvetica Bold, um, Arial Bold, you know, um, I can, is it Apple Chancery or something? Apple Chancery, Zaf Chancery, those are like the main fonts that we see all the time. Feel free to be creative. Look at your fonts. Look at look at what's out there because some you do something that somebody else already did and it's, it doesn't stand out. So you want to use your what you're passionate about and what you want to what you want to focus in on. So that's kind nice of my tip. tip. <laughs> Where can someone get fonts? I Let's like to save, go, uh, you know to download a yes. font. So I like to download fonts from defont.com. Defont.com. Okay. Yes, and they're all they're usually free. Free downloads. You can also find fonts that are you do have to pay for, but mm -hmm. um, these are general fonts like this one. I think I believe I, I chose off of um, off of the font, and all you do is just download it to your to your fonts folder, your local fonts folder, and um, you should have the font in your system. Okay. And then I know um, here you can actually go through and you have your fancy fonts like for your weddings and, mm -hmm. and special occasions. Right, and everything's by category. So this is what I like about defont.com is that everything's un under a category. So you got fancy fonts, you can go here and look up, there. there's hundreds of fonts. It, it'll tell you how many fonts you have. So just go back to themes and it just lists everything. When you're sans serif. Right, um, sans popular. serif. Oh, okay, so sans serif fonts um, are without wings, the the, the wing tips, um, meaning it doesn't have the it doesn't have the little the little swings on the ends of the letters. Okay. It's more blocked font. Okay. Um, serif is any fonts that you're looking for that have little wings at, on okay. the ends. Uh, if you see your W, you've got the wings. Whereas versus versus this, you're not you're not going to have you're not going to have so sans serifs right. without the wings, right. and and serif yes. is with with yes. wings. So it depends what your customer is looking for. Right. Um, great this, way. this is a good way to start. Um, also, Adobe has a really good type kit um, font download system, okay. so you can go in there and download fonts from there as well. And I, we, we match fonts quite often. <laughs> is there one more question that I have? Um, when you look at a font, some do we put a stroke, like if you're thinking of like a script font, like mm -hmm. for a wedding, would you add a, like a stroke to the outside, inside? Does it matter? It just depends. Um, sometimes you have to do the outside because that, no matter what you do, that center is not going to open up. Okay. And before doing that, you always have to create it to outlines. Okay. Um, but generally, I just use the regular stroke and just put point two, just play with the strokes. If you notice, 
I decided to go 0.35 instead of 0.25. Um, also, I did notice right now, the M, when I added that stroke, the M now has these little wings at the top. I see that. So I'm going to release this and I'm going to, to release grab my release it from the compound. compounded. Right. So I'm going to just click and drag these down just a tad. And it didn't change my letter. It just, just helped that situation. Right. So that's just because you added a stroke to it. Great. Well, thank you, April. Is there, um, I know that uh, you also like to use like vectorstock.com for some borders and different things like that. Yeah, some, uh, some vectorstock patterns. is great. Um, when, when you have, when you go online, it's best to always just purchase the right to the artwork. Um, when in, when necessary, you can pull. You might be able to pull something off of Google, but again, you have to check with your trademarks and your copyrights and things like that. But um, yeah, okay. okay. Well, we thank you for joining us. Um, thank you. I for think some you. great tips. I would like to have her back. Um, she's what she does. Um, actually, I think we have a question, but. You know, you think about, we'll, we'll come to that question in just a moment, but look at these bottles here. And she deals a, with a lot of customers that engrave on wine bottles. And if you look at the fine lines in this, and I'm going to turn this around, and you're going to see the tiny text, okay, all that text in there, the centers of the letters. There's sometimes where she cannot, she's not allowed to enlarge the text. Mm -hmm. It has to be exactly like the print the printed label so but she has to go in there and make adjustments and she's really good at this I would really like to bring her back and kind of kind of talk about um, wine bottles the label and the the warning label on the back and how you kind of had your tips on fixing but I think this is a great overall for just taking a couple of fonts mm -hmm. taking the points and then kind of making the adjustments right. so it looks best uh, for sandblasting. So let's take one of our questions here. Um, if I don't have an expert eye yet, um, can I consider, um, can you read that April? I'm so sorry, consider I don't have my glasses. measurements for the gaps, like 0.25 mm, for example. Um, so basically, I think it's, um, is there like a minimum, a minimum measurement? So like if you're What's the minimum, the smallest area of the white space between the letters that um, you would allow? There's really no minimum. It just depends on what mill thickness you're using, really. Because okay. um, if you're going three, you have a lot more affordability to, you know, make it thinner. But if you're going five or six, you, you don't have that. You're going to have to go a little larger. And a lot of times in doing these wine bottles and things like that, you need to make sure that you let your customer or your client know that the transfer from the transfer from a like printed a label. label to glass is going to be is going to be a little different. Right. So you're going to have to fudge a little on those little fonts, right. tiny strengthening them, making exactly. them better for yeah. for blasting. Right. And that's that's one thing. So this is April. So when you have custom mask, um, we have April and Peter in our art department, um, and you would just send in our artwork. But we this is what they do. They do artwork, they know the fonts. It's incredible, I'll show her an image, um, a, an engraved image, and she'll say, oh, that's such and such font. That has a little bit of a stroke. Uh, that has, but she, she's so quick because this is what she does. So know that you're in good hands when you send in your custom mask orders um, to our art department. So we do have a question here. Um, what program has more options and is better, easier is easier to work with? Okay, so I'm from the partial. Graphic. I'm partial to Illustrator because Illustrator has. It, it seems like when I work in Corel, there's a little more. There's a little more steps on certain things than in Illustrator. So what what in Illustrator is two steps might be three or four in Corel. But there's other programs out there that I I honestly I probably don't know about and that might be a little easier to work with. So really, it is. It's it's your personal preference, but I do enjoy working in Illustrator because the options are so wide. Yeah. Even for print work, for it, it just, you can do a lot. So you have access to both Corel and Illustrator and you tend to, yes. you lean on Illustrator. Yes, I do. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right, so the next part is going to be printing. So what do we print on? You have your artwork, you have it set up, you have it in CMYK mode, and then you print it. So you see here I have my image. It's, it's what she was working on. We have one that was 
not fixed, printed, and one that was fixed. And you can kind of just see really where you're going to see the difference is going to be in the thickness of the lines, that brush stroke that she was using. And here you see it's really faint, especially that top line before she made any adjustments. Very faint. So we're going to make a mask. We're going to kind of show you uh, what this looks like blasted. And that's going to be our next step before we get into the sandblast system. So I really encourage you to send in your questions. We'll get to them throughout the segment. I'm going to use our Luminex today. So I have two images here. I have my presidential seal. Because I, I do get, um, when people are new and they're starting out and they're washing out their photoresist film, one of the questions is people start with a full sheet. And it's great. I'm glad you're using photoresist film. Keep using it. But when you're first starting out, let's go with a couple images to wash out before going to a full sheet. Okay, so let's, let me grab my mask material here. I'm using SR3000 today, and I'm using 3 mil. Okay, it comes in the foil packs, and the foil packs means that this is light sensitive. So we wanna make sure that we keep it in the bag um, until we're ready to use it. So I'm gonna pull it back in the bag and zip this up. We wanna make sure it's closed so no light is hitting it. Again, the film is light sensitive, it's water soluble. You wanna make sure that the shiny side goes against the pad here. So we're gonna lift up our screen. We're gonna put our mask down. I'm gonna take my artwork side. We're gonna place this down. So this basically is our image transfer. Most of you are using the electrolyte unit and that's fine. It's a great, great unit to use. However, when we're dealing with detail, Details such as this presidential seal. Um, that type of detail, number one is you're gonna put it on a three mil material, but number two is, is you wanna make sure you have the best compression possible. The compression from the inkjet film, your artwork to that mask, that compression is important and that's gonna give you the highest resolution possible when it comes to your photoresist film. So now I have my, my vacuum, as you can hear this, this um, vacuum table which is compressing my artwork against my, my um, printed area. And now I'm gonna take a little squeegee because I have two pieces of art here and I kind of went from the full um, height here of my bed. I'm just gonna take a squeegee and just gonna kind of make sure that there are no air bubbles out of this area. So even though that it's a vacuum type, I just wanna make sure because I'm going to the full width of my exposure bed here that it is completely compressed together. I'm going to bring down my light table and we're going to hit the button to expose for six seconds and that's it. So the vacuum, the compression gives you better um, compression between your printed artwork and your photoresist film. I'm going to turn off the vacuum and then we're going to start to lift this up. Okay. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what it's like to wash out a full, almost a full sheet. So I have several images here. This is great. Um, when you, this would be perfect for a washout system, but we're gonna hand wash. So I would recommend when we're starting out and to have the best detail possible, start with maybe four of them. And then, then you can move on to a full sheet. But when it comes to a lot of detail, I'm going to suggest that we move to a washout system um, when you're doing full sheets with a lot of detail. We're gonna put our three mil here on the board and you're gonna see the shiny side is against my board. I'm using a white metal board today. Um, this is included in our mask making kit. I have a hand sprayer. I'm starting out with cold water right now and it's gonna start to heat up in just a moment. But hot water will help this mask to dissolve faster. I'm about one to two inches from the mask. And see, this is where it can be a little challenging to have an even wash on a full sheet with so many images that are detailed. It's not that if it was a bold design, it would be a different story, but because each one is, is detailed, you have to be really mechanical uh, with washing out. You want to make sure that we wash out nice and slow, our nozzle is close to the mask, and that we have good pressure. Pressure is key. You're starting to see my design appear here. 
my water is starting to warm up. And so, so I have eight designs. So this is enough for eight glasses. All right, as we start to see this image turn white, we're starting to break down this film and we want it to be completely white. We want the artwork area to be white and that's when we're done. So you can see I still have a blue haze. You can see right in here a little bit of a blue haze that's starting to wash. And see when you're first starting out you want to go to just about a half a sheet. Do one or two designs. There we go. And that looks really good. I'm going to turn my faucet off. And then you can kind of see your image here. And we have all our detail. This is going to look great blasted. But again, it took a little longer because I'm doing a full sheet. You want to make sure that you have a great print, a dark print. You want to be in and out of the wash cycle as quickly as possible because when you're, when you're over washing or if you have a light print, you're not going to be able to get this detail. So I'm going to give you a little tip on trying to see if you have de a, a dark print. So let's take a look here. We have our electrolyte unit. I'm going to put my cylinder over it and I'm going to take my artwork and we're just going to kind of hold it up to the light. Take your artwork, because you should, if you bought a mask making kit from us, you'll have a sample print. You're going to take your image and my image, hold it up, and you want to make sure there's no black, there's no light coming through my black areas of my artwork. And that's really important. Once you do that, you understand the density of your print. Sometimes I'll do this with customers, and they'll say it looks green or it looks purple. That means it's not 100% black. And remember, everything starts from our artwork, then we move to printing, and then we move to mass print producing the stencil. So today I used um, the Luminex 1428, the vacuum table, and then I washed out with our hand sprayer. But if you're dealing with a lot of, um, a lot of designs on a sheet and you're dealing with multiple sheets, look at, our hand, look at our automatic washers. It'll make things a little bit faster for you and it'll, it'll make things easier for you. Okay, so let's take a look at our glass here. And we have here um, the image that she created. This is before um, before she did any fixing on on the artwork on the border. I don't know if you can see that on the camera here. And then on this side, Raymond, look at that tiny little speck there on that A. It's barely hanging in there. Really thin lines. Let's go ahead and mount a mask and we're going to to do um, to blast the image that has been fixed. So I have this area here that's been fixed. We're going to take the Raymond Wilson. I'm just going to cut this. And I have three mil. Now again, the adjustments are important in the artwork when you start going to a thicker mill. You want to make sure, especially if you're blasting on a brick or a paver or granite, we want to make sure that that image is nice and, and um, bold. Okay, so we're going to take our three mil. I'm working on a curved surface. And remember, it's repositionable. If I don't, if I kind of look at this and it's crooked, there are different alignment tools that you can use. But I'm going to kind of peel off my my cover, clear liner here. Okay, and I have a little bit of wrinkles. That's okay. I'm just going to kind of lift up the stencil a little bit, kind of straighten this out. Okay, going to roll this out. Roll the wrinkles out of the design. I have a little bit of air bubbles. Okay, I'm going to take my wire wheel roller. I'm just going to roll over that. You can see that air bubble right there. You can see that. And this is where the wire wheel roller works really nice. Just pops that membrane. Then what I would do is just take my thumb and just kind of roll back over, press down those letters, and then move the air bubble through the perforated area. Okay, so now we're going to blast this so you can have something to compare to. Then after this, I'm going to get into painting the granite piece that I missed last week. I know some of you said um, 
that I had my granite piece last week because we went over the different mill thicknesses and the detail and I forgot to um, paint the granite piece. I think we're kind of pressed for time and this week I'm going to paint it and we'll remove that stencil. So I'm just using some painter's tape. The painter's tape is a great low tack tape to use um, when you're dealing with surface etching. I'm just using a barware today, a barware glass, so we're just going to have a, a light etch here. And let's start blasting. I'm going to put on my gloves today. Now, before we get into the cabinet, let's take a look here. Um, we have our adjustment, our height adjustment here in the front, so I can raise and lower it to where I'm comfortable or depending on what kind of shoes I'm wearing. Okay, so today I have, I think I have three and a half inch heels, so I gotta raise it up just a little bit for me today. We have our on and off. I have an air gun that's connected to the front of my regulator. This is my air compressor, air inlet. So this ball valve is showing that I have compression, my air compressor is connected and I am pressurized. This is my airflow valve. It tells me how much air is coming out of my blasting hose. And this down here is my sand flow valve that also controls how much sand is coming out of my blasting hose. This is my foot pedal. So we have air that comes in unregulated, goes down to the foot pedal, comes over, and we have, we're pressurized at about a little over 30 pounds today. Um, so I'm gonna blast this for you so we can uh, get an idea of what this artwork looks like after she did her adjustments, okay. And let me throw on my glove. All right. I'm gonna step on that pedal. I'm just blasting that membrane away, rotating my glass so that I'm always maintaining a 90 degree angle when I'm etching my glass. And what's important here is the centers of that A, the little, and the thickness of the lines. I'm using a three mil. And I'm just gonna go over this border just a little bit, just to make that border a little bit deeper. But that's really it. I'm done here. I'm gonna take my air gun. And we're just gonna blow off that abrasive. And now this is clean, ready to go if I wanted to paint it or just removing the stencil material. Okay, so we're gonna remove this. Now to remove the mask, you can use a sink, you can um, just remove it um, and clean it, but you, the sink is great. Just put a sink of water, uh, fill it with water, warm water, and then this mask will actually start to dissolve into, uh, will start to dissolve or remove off of the glass. So I'm just gonna kind of rinse this here and just the mask just kind of softens. And you can even take a little sponge and just kind of remove the centers of these letters. Another little tip that I have is, right now I have this filled with water, but you can actually use a strainer and put the strainer in your sink um, and then it'll capture all the centers of your letters from the mask and that way it won't go down your drain. So we like to use a little strainer um, in our classes and then we'll, that way it'll capture any of the mask material from the centers of your letters. So let's take a look at this over at the table. Okay. All right, so. We have our image, let me take our towel. And you can see the difference from this design. Okay, and then you can kind of see, we're gonna, and then we'll move this. And now let's take a look at the original artwork. And you see the lines are really thin here. Okay, and you see that center of that A is really small. You can barely see it. So this is where it's important to kind of thicken up your lines as well as you can see that center of that A, a little larger. 
where you want to thicken up those lines so you're able to have the best possible recognition possible um, for your piece. So think of awards, crystal awards, um, anything like that is always great to kind of thicken up your um, fonts, uh, add that stroke as April suggested, and they're available. If you email art at raises.com, you can, if you have any questions there, um, Peter and April can both answer your questions when it comes to fonts or artwork or images like that. Okay, so we are, I think we have a question here. Let me take a look here. Is it better to have a smaller piece of film um, cutting it close to the design or is it better to have room? I believe it's always better to have room. Um, we actually put a quarter inch border around your artwork image area and that allows you to handle the piece and provide taping. Sometimes you'll have an image and if you get really close, that mass really close to that artwork, you may have a little line there of sand if you don't have that tape right up next to it. So you want to make sure that you put a quarter inch border around that area and that way um, you have room to handle that film. Okay, so I know that we are out of time today. Um, I thank you for joining us. We will have session four next week. Um, these are all available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash sand carving. You can always access the link through our website, raises.com. Um, we have a sale going on right now, so don't miss out. It's still going on. Take a look at the film. Take a look at supplies. You want to um, get a hold of stuff while it's on sale, and you can practice, 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 because we are going to be busy here. We're headed into summer. It's going to be busy. I believe it. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Send me your questions and your comments. I'll get to them.